The featured sponsor of the Pairs with Life podcast is Wine Spies. If you're looking for incredible deals on both domestic and imported wines, I'm talking up to 75% off retail price, try Wine Spies. It's not a club. There's no obligation to buy. They even have a -a build-a-case option so you can mix and match wines and take advantage of free shipping on every purchase. So check it out. Go to winespies.com slash pairswithlife and you'll get a $10 credit towards your first purchase. That's winespies.com dot com slash pairs with life. Check it out. Wine spies. You're going to love it. Live from a really big studio with lots of expensive and complex equipment. It's the pairs with life podcast. And center stage on a mic. He's OG putting this shit on wax. JT. John Taylor. Now let's talk about life and hope and sex. Let's talk about sex. And wine. Baby, let's talk about you and me. And wine. The world is a fucked up place. These kids. These goddamn kids. I can't believe we even had these goddamn kids. It's the Pairs with Life podcast. Wow. Motherfucker. Joining me on the podcast today, I'm so excited about this, our special celebrity guest. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> Carrie Flaspolar, joining us from Atlanta, Georgia. How are you doing today? I am excellent on this beautiful, beautiful day. How are you? Oh, that's great. Is it a beautiful day in Atlanta, Georgia? You know, it's somewhat overcast, but it's in the 50s in December, so I will take it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, we're about in the low 60s, sunshine, fall type of day here uh, here in the Bay Area. That is beautiful. Well, I'm glad that we are getting the pleasantries and the weather out of the way so we can get into the good stuff. <laughs> exactly. We'll talk about the weather for a second, and then we'll address the fact that our anxieties are through the roof. You that did tell me right. off mic that your anxieties were through the roof today. That so. is exactly right. I'm at about an 11 out of 10, so this is sure to be a fun ride for everyone. Absolutely, because that's why we're out here. We're here to talk about our anxieties and the comfort food and wine that we use, that we use to medicate ourselves for these circumstances. Exactly right. Yes. So uh, all y'all out there, as they say in the South, don't they say all y'all in the South, Carrie? We sure do. Yes, it is um, gender neutral and enjoyed by everyone. Excellent. So all y'all might know Carrie by her Instagram handle, uh, Drink With Carrie. Uh, if you haven't followed her on Instagram yet, you should because her posts are incredible, which is how we met. I, I saw your posts and they were great and we started talking and here we are. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I find everything good in my life on the internet. I found my husband on the internet. I met you on the internet. It's really just kind of a part of who I am. That's awesome. I, I feel the same way. I get Russian boner pills on the internet. All the porn I want is on the internet. It's That's like, it's, yes. it's exactly the same thing. So yes. it's pretty. <laughs> yes, the internet, the blessing and the curse of the 20th century. It's uh, it's an amazing, amazing thing. But I'm glad I met you through there. And I'm glad you're joining us here on the podcast to talk about comfort food and the wine that pairs with it. And the reason why. We need this comfort food, especially in 2020, for God's sake. Yes, we do. All right. So, Carrie, I'm going to let you open up with this with your first pairing. So rock me. Amazing. Just to confirm, I do get the great countdown bumpers, right? You you do get the countdown bumper. Let's drop that thing right now. Number four. Amazing. Yes. As someone who did listen to the radio in 90s, those just bring me great, great joy. Oh, that's fantastic. As somebody who listened to the radio in the 80s, uh, it just I, it was, it's a Casey Kasem moment for me. That's uh, just, great. Yeah, just listening to that. It's like, yes. I love it. And I have to admit that, you know, being the oldest man on the planet, I also listened to a little transistor radio, you know, a little AM transistor oh, wow. radio back when I was just a little tiny kid that had the one cord that, you know, that led up to the your one ear. You didn't even get like stereo mono headphones. You had one ear headphone and you, you tuned in the one radio station on your AM radio that was, you know, probably blasting out of a 400 megawatt antenna out of Tijuana, Mexico. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, I love so. that. I'm not trying to brag, but I also have one ear headphones, but it's because my headphones broke and I'm too cheap to buy a new pair. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. 
Start us off. You had your bumper. Let's do this thing. What you got? All right. So my pairing is Chablis and macaroni and cheese. Oh, I got chills up my spine with that one. Uh, Tell me more. Tell me more. So I have to say, I am a big fan of like baked macaroni and cheese, but I feel like this pairing would also work with good old fashioned like Blue Box or Velveeta. I mean, you could probably even try it out with some Easy Mac. I'm not telling you how to live your life, but I'm a big fan of like creamy baked mac and cheese. How do you like your mac and cheese? Oh man, that all sounds really good. So it's funny you had mentioned that because I've just recently started like home making macaroni and cheese, like oh, mac really? mac and cheese from scratch. Yeah, where you start with a roux, oh, yeah. right? Your yeah, your flour, your milk, or your flour, your butter. Add the milk and then start throwing in the cheese. Uh oh yeah, and then you just experiment with any kind of cheese you like. Oh, it's so good, so yes. good. And- and I'm with you on the baked part. Like if you take that whole thing, you smother it with more cheese and then throw <laughs> right. it in the broiler for, for a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. And you know what it's amazing with? Chablis. <laughs> <gasps> Tell yeah. me, what kind of sh- – uh, are, are you drinking a specific Chablis right now? Is there one that's like really floats your boat at this point? Yeah. So the Chablis that I am drinking with this today is a 2019 Val de Mer by – and I apologize to this man for mispronouncing his name. But I'm going to go with – Patrick Hughes. And um, it is a really nice one. It's obviously comes from beautiful, beautiful stainless steel. So it's nice. It's crisp. It's dry. It has all of those wonderful things that cut all of that creamy cheesiness in your mouth. So tons of acidity, but not lots of nice, bright flavors. It is just a, a beautiful thing. Wow. That sounds fantastic. Patrick Pews. Is that yeah. what you were saying? Yeah. Okay. P-I-U-Z-E. P-I-U-Z-E. Puse. That sounds very French. Puse. <laughs> Indeed it is. As, yes. as we know with our wonderful Chablis. Yeah. Oh, I love Chablis. That is just, that's just a great choice right there. I think you've set the bar very high with that one. Thank you, sir. All right. So uh, time to lie down on the therapist's couch, Carrie, and tell us why you need comfort with this particular pairing. Yeah, so I'm going to pair this pairing with being an absolute workaholic. That is, uh, um, that's what I'm, I'm drowning in macaroni and cheese and Chablis today. Wow, that's a really good one. That's, um, yeah, being a workaholic is a tough one. Yeah. yeah it's not great. It's not great. So why why are you a workaholic? What what turned you into a workaholic? Are you goal driven? Is there something that you need out of life, or that that you just don't think you will get unless you work twenty four seven? That's actually a great question. I feel like it stems more from my absolute fear of failure because every uh. time I hit a goal. Um, then it's just like, I need more of that goal. It's like chasing the gold dragon. So I think that that is the biggest thing is just the fear of failure drives me to work too much. I'm going to, I'm going to say too much. (laughs) Wow. I I feel your pain. I think that's awesome because it's it's, because it's awesome to be in pain. Um, because fear of failure is is the number one motivator of my life. Fear of failure and fear of like this being all there is to it. Uh, but yeah, it's like, and it's so ironic too, because when you're driven by fear of failure and you're a, a workaholic and you're just working all the time so that you don't fail, you are going to fail more often than others. That's absolutely right. Yes, I appreciate you acknowledging that. Yes, the fear of failure actually drives more failure because you give yourself more opportunities to fail. Exactly. You're trying harder. You're doing more. You're going to fail more often. And it's, uh, yeah, that's a crazy one. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I, I, I am, I, I'm glad that we're sharing a mutual neurosis here. And uh, it's really unhealthy. And I think that the best way of dealing with that is large quantities of cheese and wine and pasta. So I think you nailed it. Thank you. Yeah, I think that that's exactly right. Right on. All right. Um, here is my first pairing. We'll give this the number. We'll call it number three just because we're doing a listicle kind of thing, but it's not like the third best. We're not we're not competing with each other on this. It's just. But or, are both- we? or are we? Or are we? 
I dig you. Oh my god. I'm not going to yeah. fail these pairings, John. <laughs> yes. All right. So, um number 3. My first choice is is kind of a new pairing for me. I'll explain why, but it's um pecan pie with brandy. Uh, specifically the Gran Paradiso uh, Smith Devereaux brandy that just came out uh, about a month ago. So here's the story of this pairing. First of all, I've got a sweet tooth. I've got a sweet tooth out the wazoo. That is my number one food weakness is sweets, uh, cookies, cake, pie, uh, ice cream, (laughs) ice cream, Uh, all of it. Just, um, yeah, uh, put me in a diabetic coma. Uh, I love it all. And it's actually, I, I'm, I'm the, I actually prefer eating sweets with sweet wine. I'm not one of these types who are like, oh, okay, let's let's pair up, you know, a really smooth, creamy milk chocolate with a super bold Napa Cabernet. It's nah, no, let's drink yeah, port I'm instead. I, yeah, I'm awesome. So I made a pecan pie for the first time um, uh, for Thanksgiving. And I brought over this Grand Paradiso uh, brandy from Smith Devereaux to uh, my little tiny Thanksgiving family get together. Uh, and it was awesome. And it felt good. It was good to be with the family. And the brandy is amazing. Uh, and the pie was fantastic. So I immediately <laughs> went home and made myself another pie, right? I had it. Ew. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, like, and so for every day for about seven days, I. Um, ate a slice of pie and drank some brandy with it. And it was good. It was comforting. I think that sounds incredible. And I'm actually, I have to tell you, I'm very jealous that you have a body bottle of this brandy. And I would love for you to tell me all about it so I can live vicariously through you. Okay, fantastic. So it's, yeah, it's the Smith Devereaux brandy. It's the first time they've made a brandy. It's a VSOP. And one of the cool things that they did was they aged the brandy in the same barrels that they make their Ibex um, wine brand. Okay, so I know they make an Ibex Merlot. I bet there's others in the line. I I just don't know what they are. But it's sort of the Smith Devereaux top of line um, wine that they make. Uh, Ian Devereaux being one of the coolest guys on the planet, uh, I gave him a call. I said, give me a bro deal. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I totally, I totally leveraged the bro deal thing with him and uh, said, give me a bro deal on your, on your uh, brandy. And he did. And I think this is bottle number. I can't read anymore because I'm old for 350 bottle wow, number number bottles. That yeah. Is, that's some classy stuff right there. He makes it great is. wines though. I have to say. They really do. They really do. And they're, they're great wines and they're great priced and he's a great guy. So I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I love this guy or hate him because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to agree. I, I actually first tried um, their wines when they had that fundraiser for the California wildfires. And I was like, yes, how can I resist this? Everybody loves these wines and, and he's helping people out. Like, I, I just think that's so cool. Yeah, it was really cool. And I think uh, they raised at least $4,000 because I saw that they had done a, a check for $4,000. Yeah. And and so, yeah, just so a great guy, a great winery. And this is some great brandy. And um, I've tried it a couple of different ways. Um, uh, I, I actually kind of like it just putting like one ice cube in there, letting it melt. Um, and it really brings the sweetness out was, was one of the things that that did. So it made it even better with the pecan pie. Mm-hmm. Bless your heart with the pecan pie. I love it. <laughs> I love little Southern twang you adopted just for that very <laughs> sentence. That was good. So why do I drink this damn thing? Um, and why do I need this comfort food? Uh, my turn on the, uh, on the therapist couch. Okay. So here's the thing. I eat and drink this to help push down the ominous feeling of existential dread. Uh, that's sort of the the overarching um, descriptor of of what I'm feeling these days is this sense of existential dread. Wow! Yeah. In regards to anything in particular. <sighs> Well, I guess by its very nature, existential dread is, is, is about existence and, you know, what is the meaning of it all? And I think that really, I, I think that kind of nails it. I am entering the third and final act of my life. And, um, 
And so there's, you know, there's a moment of reflection of like, okay, is this where I wanted to be? Am I going to get everything done that I wanted to get done? Is this going to be a a slowdown period or is this going to be the, you know, the best period, uh, you know, of my life? And then, you know, the, the, the thing is, is I've, I have always led a very non-linear life, okay? Things that probably should happen in your 50s, I've done in my 20s. And things that I've done in my 30s, I'm hoping are going to happen in my 50s. And, you know, I'm I'm a single father of two young daughters, you know, two girls, 11 and under. And it's like all the other fathers that I know that are in that position are, you know, 10, 15 years younger than me. And... You know, so it's it's just like, where the hell am I? Where am I going? And and is it all going to turn out okay? Yeah, and that is um, terrifying. As someone entering my second third of my life uh, with no children, I I feel that <laughs> feel that yeah. in my core. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's a tough one to deal with without pecan pie and brandy, especially. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I, yeah. And that's the thing is, that's the whole thing about neuroses and and all the things that drive you crazy is, I don't have an answer. I'm not going to tell you what the answer is. I I don't. Therefore, uh, I eat and drink. Yeah. I feel like the answer is just more pecan pie and brandy, quite frankly. (laughs) That's that's it. That's it. Uh, Yeah. yeah. Just smother it a little bit. Exactly. Smother it. Push it down. Push, push it, push it deep, down. Deep exactly. down, like all of our feelings and unresolved issues. That's exactly, I mean, that's exactly. My, uh, practice in life. It's yes. Alcohol. Well. <laughs> oh, yeah, perfectly. Yeah. Alcohol and denial are where it's at. So there Absolutely. you go. Absolutely. I think that's going to be the name of my uh, my band that I started with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Excellent. That'll be, uh, that'll be my memoir. Um, <laughs> all right. So speaking of which, what is your next pairing? Number two. Yes, so my next pairing, this is actually one of my like real classic, I eat this a lot pairings, is pepperoni pizza and rose. Oh, wow. Oh, I love that. Yes. yes. It is my go to. I love it because I, I just love pepperoni pizza. I think it's great. I think it's the perfect balance of like cheesy, spicy indulgence. But I, I like the rose with it because. It's got enough acid, you know, to hold up against the strong flavors. It's got like a little bit of that dry fruitiness to kind of offset it. I mean, I feel like the two of these things married together are just the perfect combination. I know rosé is like summer drink, but any time of year, pizza and rosé, it's a go-to. Wow. Uh, that's a genius pairing. It really is. Because rosé, when you think of a pizza, you know, what is it? It's bread and cheese, you know, which are, you, you think white wine, but then it's got the marinara and the pepperoni and you're thinking red wine. So God, rosé and pepperoni pizza. Nice. Mm-hmm. Nice. Indeed. Yes. And the um, rosé that I prefer to pair with pepperoni pizza, the one that I am I am going with today it's actually the 2018 Rosé of Syrah by Ooh. Means to Dreams. Um, this wine comes from Santa Rita Hills. The two winemakers, Tara and Maria, are just delightful humans. I have this theory in life that good people make good wine, and these women just make the best wine and are just like the coolest people. So, Oh, that's with, awesome. Going with that, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And what's it called again? It's called Kameens Two Dreams. C A M I N S. The number two dreams. And the thing that's kind of interesting about it is Kameens actually means paths in Catalan. So um, paths uh, to dreams. Yeah. Nice. Oh yeah. God, yeah. I like it even better now. And it's a rosé of Syrah, so it's probably got a little bit of grip in there. You know, right. it's not a, it's not a Grenache. A yeah, it's got a little body on her. You know yeah. yeah, yeah, I do know what you're saying, actually. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. it's great. That is awesome. That is, oh, God, yeah, that's a good one. I could binge that. That's, um, I like it. All right, so, Carrie, back on the couch. What's going on? Why do you need this comfort food? Yes, yeah, so, um, you know, it's, it's kind of prescient 
that I'm going with a Camines to Dreams, Paths to Dreams, because I am pairing this with, uh, this kind of ties in with your existential dread. It's like the other side of it. Having nothing meaningful to leave behind. Like I mentioned oh. already, I am just a major workaholic. I have no progeny. So it's just this, this overwhelming um, fear that I have nothing meaningful to leave behind in my life. That it's like, uh, if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, all that y'all have of me is a half-finished blog uh, that I have never actually published and an Instagram page of me drinking too much wine. That's it. That's what you get. Wow. Wow. So it's a legacy thing. That's really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And now, now everybody needs to have a job. I get that. Everyone has to has to put some amount of their soul into their job in order for it to be successful and for the paychecks to come in. But do you find soul satisfaction in your job? Wow, that is a that is a deep question. Um so I don't, I don't know how many people out in the world know about my real life, but I'm actually a recruiter in my uh, real life. So I do find satisfaction in that. Like I help people get jobs, which is just a really cool feeling. So there is some sense of that, I think. Maybe that is why I'm okay being a workaholic and feeling like I have nothing meaningful to leave behind is I do actually spend my day like trying to help people's lives be better. Um yeah, so maybe there is kind of a balance there. That's that's interesting. I haven't ever thought of that. You know, it's it it, it and you just absolutely made me think of something right now, it, it, especially in this in this concept of legacy, because not to get creepy, but at your funeral, right? No one's going to stand up and say, "Carrie was a great recruiter. <laughs> she was just one of the best recruiters I had ever met," but. They will stand up and say, Carrie really loved to help people. So you're getting this satisfaction of helping people through your job. But the job part of it is not the legacy. It's why you did it. What was it about you that's the legacy? Wow. I think that, you know, I have to tell you, you're actually making me feel a lot better about my life right now. Thank you. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> Great. That'll be $150. Yes. Please send me your bill. That is wonderful. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think that is kind of true. I mean, I think that both of these things um, play into one another, but it's just thinking about, you know, you've got your, your kids. So even if you are having this existential dread about what is next in your life, like if you get hit by a bus tomorrow, you, you've left something cool in the world. So I think that that's, that's kind of where it comes from. But I will just, you know, keep my little job baby and and keep pressing on. Right on. Right on. You know, it's um it is a it, it's an interesting thing about kids in as much as uh, on the one hand, you are right, you know. If I get hit by a bus, I would have these kids um that would carry my name and are super cool people. I also have uh, a son in Chicago. I got kids like from one end of this nation to the other, right? <laughs> and so I've got this son in Chicago and he is an amazing human being. And that's the thing is that these kids, they, they're they kids for a while and then they become amazing human beings. And so I am glad that his life energy is out there, you know. But at the same time, having kids... For me, though, it's been like the most rewarding thing and has taught me about unconditional love and has given me insight to what the human condition is all about. It has not um, substituted uh, my need for a legacy or to create. I mm -hmm. still want to do all the things, you know, I, I, I haven't I haven't sat back and said, you know what, got these kids. That's good enough. And I don't know, maybe that's just the ultimate narcissist selfish thing to say. <laughs> uh, I think it's great, though, because you create wonderful things. I have to I don't know if I'm allowed to just give like a quick plug, but your book is really, really good. So you've got that. Oh, thank you. Y you can plug my book all the time. That's oh, totally wonderful. allowed. <laughs> life by John Taylor out now. I think it's on Kern Publications. We'll just do Ooh. the whole thing, right? Well I done. Podcast enough. I'm, well I'm, done. I'm into it. Excellent. Uh, I appreciate that. Sincerely, I, I do appreciate that. And and yes, to me, those are legacy things. The the albums I made with my band, uh, this the, the book, the next book, 
God willing, the TV show, all that stuff, it, the podcast, you know, yeah. So I hope I've made you feel worse about your legacy. <laughs> Well, you know what does make me feel better is I still have a few more years. So you it's do. Okay. I've got some time. You have so many more years, and that I, I'm going to let that bring me into into my uh, final uh, pairing because that's exactly where my neuroses lies. Number one. My final pairing is nachos with tempranillo. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so tell me about these nachos because I freaking love nachos, and so oh. I to just like visualize them. All right, let me let me let me let me lay my nachos on you here. Um, thick tortilla chips. Okay, Ooh. they got to they got to stand up right because they're carrying a, they're carrying a load here. These these are working tortilla chips. Okay, um, melted cheese, not like gooey nacho cheese not not, not like the the pump dispenser petroleum product nacho cheese <laughs> but like actual cheese that's placed on there you put under the broiler it melts okay. um jalapeno slices pico de gallo guacamole sour cream maybe some lettuce no beans we don't do beans and there you go those are my nachos wow. so nachos with all the sides just yes yes that's pretty great Yes. That's really great. Now, you see, I'm not, I, like I said earlier, I'm not much of a savory. I mean, I'm not, yeah, I'm not much of a savory person. I, I, I like the sweet, but when I'm going savory, it's got to be, um, it's got to be nachos. And uh, yeah. And then the tempranillo goes really well with it because it's nice and spicy. It's got that peppery thing happening. Um, a little lower in alcohol, which is just something I'm going for these days because I, I love drinking wine. But, you know, mm-hmm. you, you're drinking a Napa Cab, you get two glasses into it and you're wasted, right? <laughs> Because all that shit is 16.5% alcohol, but you legally can lie about the alcohol on, on wine in California. So, is yeah. Is that it, true? I didn't know that. Yes. If you're, a, I believe the rule is if you are above 15% alcohol, that you can cheat and buy as much as one point. So, wow. if, yeah. How about that? So, we could all be out here getting like super effed up from some California wines. Exactly. And telling us, like, maybe it's not going to be that bad. Yeah, like, oh, no, no, that's 14.9%. I'll tell you this. If you see anything on a label that's, like, 15.3, I guarantee you it's 16.5, okay? That's, I mean, that wow. when you're over, and I'm saying this as a person who's worked at the wineries. <laughs> I've been in the lab when the winemaker has said, oh, fuck, we're calling oh. this 15.3 for sure. Oh, man, Why don't light a I match. Think- that yeah. explains so many nights of my life, actually. That's <laughs> really good to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, that, that's something. So, the um, uh, my my current preferred Tempranillo is the Bacchus Vineyards Liberty Oaks Vineyard uh, Tempranillo. Bacchus Vineyards is a uh, 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 they're actually vineyards and a winemaker uh, up in Lodi. Um, and I say it that way because they sell their fruit off to a lot of different wineries uh, and then they make their own. And since it's up in Lodi, it's super hot, very hot climate up there. So that's why you get all that Lodi Zinfandel. Um, uh, but it's perfect for these Spanish varietals. And Bacchus Vineyards grows, um, you know, Tempranillo, Granacha, uh, funky shit like Suzao. Um, Graciano, all these great Spanish varietals, and they're really, really good. And the Lake Oaks Vineyard one is, um, it's only 29 bucks a bottle. I, I personally am a cheap ass bastard and <laughs> love keeping things under 15 bucks, but you know what? For this thing, it's, it's 29 is really good. So, yeah, it's worth it. And if it's lower alcohol, you can just pound that whole thing in one sitting. So exactly. You're really getting your money's worth. Exactly. You're getting your comfort food's worth by pounding that whole thing, plus a, uh, a, a plate of nachos that's bigger than your head. And, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What uh, what neurosis are you drowning in this delicious bottle? Uh, uh, um, am I just going to die alone? Is that is that what's going to happen? And by alone, I don't mean like I mean, I have all these kids, right? I have kids everywhere and they seem to like me. OK, and I think they'll be there. Um, and on that day that they need to, like, push the morphine to the max there and just let me go, uh, you know, they'll 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 come for that. And that'll be cool. And that's good. And, you know, I do have a few friends um, <laughs> that still manage to hang around and I've got family members uh, and that's good. But it's like, all right, you know, am I going to have somebody to 
share this with, right? Isn't that what they say the foundation of happiness is? That you have you have a goal, a thing you want to do, and you have a person you can share that with. I mean, those are like the two fundamentals of happiness. And yeah, I've had two marriages and a handful of loves. Um, But am I just going to flail through this whole love thing until I'm on my deathbed alone? Wow. So you want like the notebook ending where you're like spooning in the home and that's that's how you go out. That. Wow, that's a that's a great question. Yeah, you know, that that wouldn't be that wouldn't be bad. That would be a cool thing. Um but yeah, yeah, either that or just somebody who's going to push the morphine drip one I, <laughs> one of the one of the two. You're um, like lifetime canasta partner. Right. <laughs> yes. A partnered game, I don't know. I don't know, but it's an old person's game, which was that's why right. that was super funny. <laughs> um Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and and that, so I, uh, yeah. And like any neuroses, you just go in circles with it, right? You don't have an answer. That's why you're sucking down Tempranillo and eating nachos. You don't have an answer. If you had an answer, you wouldn't be comfort eating. You just go around in the circle of like, oh, wait, I've been super lucky to have like this handful of great loves in my life. And I should express extreme gratitude for that. And then you circle back around of like, Whoa, look at all the hearts I've broken because I'm an asshole and I don't know what I'm doing, you know, and that circle just keeps going to like, yeah, and because you're an asshole, you'll never really have the love that you've always wanted. And yeah, then it circles back to, but wait a minute, you had, you know, a handful of great loves in your life. And so, yeah, so that just keeps going. And, and therefore I medicate it. Yeah, yeah. but I feel like it's out there. I mean, I am, this might be an unpopular opinion. But I am a strong believer that not everyone has just like one soulmate in the world. That There are like a lot of people that could be that right person for you. It's just all about timing and happening to be and like reaching for the same pineapple at the same time and the ingles or whatever the hell you're doing. Like I, I truly believe that it's it's out there. It's just, you know, you might just have to wait for it and keep drowning yourself in Tempranillo for three months. Who knows? There you go. There you go. I I. I I, 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 when I'm going in that circle of neuroses, I, I go through that point. That's a, that's a totally legitimate point. And, you know, I think it, it certainly plays into my personal philosophy that the universe doesn't just like, the universe doesn't wait for you to solve all your internal problems because <laughs> it's going to line up the perfect things in your life for you as soon as you are capable of getting them. I, no, I don't believe in that shit at all. But I no. do believe that, that yes, the perfect love in your life may come along. But if you haven't, you know, if you haven't done anything about your previous dysfunctions, you won't recognize it or be able to maintain that relationship. Yeah, I think that's true. I do think if you find that right person, they will they will handle all of your neurosis and dysfunction. Shout out to my husband. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's a really uh, – that's an interesting point. Why does a person put up with another person's dysfunction? I mean, I feel like we all know the real answer to that, but I think there's something deeper like – you know, you really find somebody that you care about and you love and there's deeper meaning and stuff. But um, I mean, I feel like it's like my husband just thinks I'm hot. I think that that's like at the core there you of go. it. But I was going to ask, like, like, is the like... real reason because you put out all the time? I mean, is that... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is really nice to me and handles all of my dysfunction. I should probably just leave it at that. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, Carrie, this has been nothing but awesome and great fun. And I appreciate you especially getting on the therapist's couch and and opening up uh, about your neuroses because um, it's the it's the honesty part that that's um, that's the best. Yes. Thank you, sir. I feel like I, I worked through some of my issues today. So this has been mutually beneficial. I feel like this topic, especially, you know, we met on Instagram. Instagram always looks so perfect all the time. And everybody's like gorgeous and filtered and whatever. But we're all like kind of a mess in some ways. And so this yes. is a fun topic to crack into. 
Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, and I appreciate you doing it. And your pairings are amazing. Uh, I think that this afternoon I'm going with the rosé and uh, pepperoni pizza. Yes, uh, please do. Please do. I had it for dinner last night. I've got leftover pizza in the fridge. It's nice. It's probably going to happen again. Yeah, and I, I have to tell you, I'm very jealous of your pie and brandy. I'm, I'm ah. try that out. All right. Yeah, well, you know, you can get it. It is available. Uh, um but uh, yeah, get it get it while you can. I think is the um, the operative thing there. All right. So if you do not follow Carrie on Instagram, you absolutely should. Drink with Carrie at Drink with Carrie on Instagram. Do you have Do you have uh, anything else you want to plug? You have a blog. You have a uh, another account. Do you? Uh, you know, I do have a half finished blog that I mentioned. It is drinkwithcarrie.com. You will find lots of unfinished things and. Um, Maybe if I put that out there in the world, that'll that'll fuel me to actually do something with it. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, because now you have pressure. Yeah, That's right. People know about it. Here's the official launch. Congratulations. You got the, uh, <laughs> the exclusive here. Nice. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Carrie. And uh, take care out there in, in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you, John. Always a pleasure. <laughs> that's going to wrap it up here on the pairs with life podcast thank you for joining us as always i'm not going to say listen and subscribe uh because if you're listening to this you have listened and you've probably subscribed but i will say if you haven't left a review on the podcast yet please do so don't make me beg i mean it's not that i'm beyond it i'll put on these knee pads i'm not beyond putting on the knee pads begging you begging you in that way that only those knee pads can to leave a nice review for the podcast. I want to thank Carrie Flaspolar for joining us this week on the Pairs with Life podcast with her incredible pairings uh, and for letting the neuroses flow. It's not easy. It's not easy to just, you know, talk to some dude you've never met all the way across the country and say, yeah, this is why I'm screwed up on the inside. That's, that's not an easy thing. So I thank you, Carrie. If you're not following Carrie yet on Instagram, don't be a loser. Don't be a freak. Just follow her. It's super easy. Drink with Carrie at Drink with Carrie on Instagram. You will be most pleased to follow her. Okay, but not like in a stalkery, freakish kind of way, but just like an Instagram kind of way. And don't be don't be sliding into her DMs. Come on, guys, work with me here. All right, I think we got that covered. Hey, here's some great news. This might be the best news you've heard in all of 2020. My book, Pairs with Life is discounted to $9.99 for the holiday season. Oh my God! You can get Pairs with Life, my debut novel, for only $9.99. It's incredible. It's incredible. You thought this was a fucked up year? Now it's all good again. All right? So go to hernpublications.com, H-U-R-N publications.com. You can order it there. You can also order it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, just all the places. And it should just be $9.99 here for the holiday season. Give the gift of entertaining reading to somebody that you love. Or give the gift of entertaining reading to somebody you hate, okay? And then they won't hate you anymore. And you won't hate them. And then 2020 really will have its redemption moment. Awesome. Thanks again, everybody. Be sure to join us next week on the Paris with Life podcast. And until then... Make good choices. 